Yes, lobbies, welcome back to another DIY. And today I have something so excited that I want to share with you guys. And I know I say this in almost every single one of my DIYs, but I do love them. And if you guys don't already know, my new uploading schedule is DIY Wednesdays and Chit Chat Saturdays, where I talk about anything and everything underneath the sun if I feel like talking about it. So in light of the new Pokemon Go game, I'm sure you've seen people walking around trying to catch a Pokemon. So in celebration and in light of this app, I want to show you guys how to make these cute little Bulbasaur plant holders. At first, I was thinking about making little Pokemon mugs. There's already a bunch of Pikachu mugs out there. So I thought, what would be cuter than to create a Bulbasaur planter? And it works out so well because Bulbasaur has that bulb on his back and, and you know, the, the plant will represent that. I thought it was cute and I wanted to share it with you guys. So here we are. Let's go ahead and get ready. Today we're gonna get a little dirty, okay? All right, so I am going to start out with two vases and quick question, do you guys say vases or vases? Okay, anyways, I am removing the label off of these bad boys and here's a really awesome tip. I just use one of these Clorox disinfectant wipes. Since there's alcohol in it, it just removes the label and the glue that's on the label so beautifully. Okay, so for the ears, I am going to use Sculpey polymer clay. And I am just going to take a nice little round ball and I am flattening it out a little bit. And then I start creating ears out of them. So I kind of just do like a little point at the top that's a little bit rounded off. And then I go ahead and I just cut off some of the excess at the bottom. Okay, then I pop the ears right onto the glass and make sure you kind of push on it a little bit so that it sticks to the glass. So once both ears are on, you're gonna keep patting it down and then what you're gonna do is you are going to just drag the clay against the glass and this will help taper off the clay a little bit so there isn't just a drop. All right, now you're gonna pop these bad boys into an oven and let it bake for 215 degrees for about 15 minutes. All right, next with some sandpaper, add an 80 grit because you need to blast off some of the extra polymer clay that's on it. This will help smooth out the ears, especially if you have fingerprints on it. And at the same time, it really helps taper the clay into the glass so it doesn't look like there's a seam where the ear is connected to the glass. Using finer sandpaper, I'm gonna go ahead and just quickly smooth out the whole thing because the 80 sandpaper will kind of leave some scratches. You actually don't have to do this. You can skip this step, but yeah, I just think it gives it a better finish. All right, now it's time to paint the planters. And I'm using two colors here. The first one's agave, and this one is grass. Honestly, it was really hard for me to find paint that would match a Bulbasaur. And if you look closely, most Bulbasaurs kind of look like they're Tiffany's blue, don't they? But maybe a little bit more green. So I just kept playing with the paint color and the paint ratio until I got something that's close to Bulbasaur. And I just apply paint all over the glass. And I ended up doing two coats, and I let it dry in between each coat. All right, now it's time to paint on Bulbasaur's face and I just printed out his face so that it's easier for me to follow as I am sketching him on. So first I cut out his mouth and I just prop it right onto the glass and I just trace completely around it. And then I cut out one eye and I trace around that one eye. I flip it over to the other side and I also trace on that eye. At the bottom, I draw these little half circles things so that it represents the claws. And now it is time to paint. And actually in the description box, I kind of labeled the ratio of each paint color to get the color that I created for Bubblezor's mouth and his eyes and his spots because he's very specific in coloring. So I hope that will help you guys out a little bit. Oh my gosh, it's so cute, I can't even deal. So basically, you're just gonna stick a plant inside of him. And I tried really hard to find a succulent that looks like a bulb. Yeah, I couldn't find anything. So if you guys do find something, that'd be really cute. So first, I am going to fill him up one fourth of the way with some rocks. And then I squeeze out the soil from the succulent as much as I can. All right, now you're gonna take the soil and fill it up halfway with the soil. And then you're going to go back and forth between the pebbles and the soil. Now I noticed my succulent is too big for this planter, so I'm just gonna break off some of the little leaves here and be sure to save the leaves because you will need it. Then I stick the succulent in, I fill it up with more soil, and I fill it up with more pebbles. And once you're done, use a dry paper towel to brush off all of the dirt that is making Bubblesaur's face dirty. 
Keep in mind that these little leaves here, if you broke them off correctly, you can just place them on a wet paper towel and a new succulent will come out of it. Okay, you guys, is this not the cutest thing ever? I am seriously dying and I'm so proud of myself. I'm never usually proud of my DIYs, but this one turned out really awesome and it's so cute. Um, this is actually the bookshelf that's sitting behind me while I edit my videos and look how cute it looks up there. So what do you guys think of the DIY? It's so cute, don't you think? I love having plants because I feel like it keeps the room alive. And I know there's a lot of you guys who are like killing plants and I'm usually one of those people, but I actually have it on my calendar every other week to water my plants and all of them are thriving. And in fact, there's one that looks like it's trying to reach towards sunlight and I'm very happy with that. I made two bubble zores because one of them is actually a gift, but uh, I'm definitely gonna store this one in my office because it's cute as f if you guys are going to be attempting this, keep in mind that you can make Jigglypuff, um, Pikachu, and all other sorts of Pokemons as well. Um, you just gotta create the ears differently and paint it a certain color, but you know, be creative and have fun with it. And if you're gonna try this out, please use the hashtag S-L-O-A-B-N so I could take a look at your creations because that's what motivates me to keep on making DIYs. Also, if you do like this video, please like it down below, share it with everyone that you know, and of course, subscribe to my channel by clicking on that subscribe button because it makes me very very happy and uh, y'all know what to do at the end of my videos remember to always rock on slobies bye i hate everything about this you see how like the ear is not blended in i know i know perfection doesn't exist but i can't do this i'm so annoyed I had to share it with you guys because you know what? Sharing is caring and that's why I'm on the internet. So today I am going to show you guys how to make the most invisible eyelid tape that you can ever, ever find just by using tool. Now for those of you who don't understand the concept of eyelids or having double lids or monolids or whatever, it's kind of an Asian problem or people with hooded eyelids problem. I can't say that it's 100% invisible because duh, something's being stuck on your eyelids. In comparison to many, many, many things that I've used, including eyelid tapes, eyelid mesh, eyelid glue, just all sorts of crazy things out there. This by far would have to be the most invisible. So I am going to go ahead and show you how to do this. All right, so you're gonna need some tool 